question about national security. Now, one issue that these left-wing uh, operatives referred to with regard to national security, they said they surveyed 2,000 registered voters. Sure. Where? At Detroit? If it was a legitimate poll, the number one issue that everyone wants to hear about in the first or second line of, Trump, of Mr. Uh, Trump's speech on inauguration night would be about the wall. I'll give you the list right now. If I were the speechwriter, which I'm not, the umbrella will not be there. If I were Trump's speechwriter, in, in that inaugural speech, within the first few lines of thanking the people for voting him and this and that, I would reemphasize what they voted for. They didn't vote for his good looks. They didn't vote because he has a beautiful wife and a beautiful family. They voted because he promised to build a wall, lower taxes, tariff China and Mexico, start the deportation buses running to Mexico, to gut Obamacare, to save the Second Amendment, to rebuild the military, to save the schools, to stop infanticide, to free our religion. That would be in the speech I would write. And I don't know who's writing. I guess they said who's writing the speech. I'm not writing it. But I do know this. That's what you want to hear about. And that's why I wrote the book Trump's War. Because it's all of those things that I put in there to remind not only you why you voted and what we must fight for in the coming months and years, but also to make sure that the rhinos in Congress, forget the Democrats, write them off that the rhinos in Congress, your Republican representatives, must not be permitted to make believe that they don't know why you got out and voted. You understand that? To make sure your voice is heard. And that is, you can say, well, how is it going to be heard if you buy the book from Savage Trump's War? Well, if you're at work, you put it on your work desk. You're walking in the street, you carry it, unless you're in Detroit. Or in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, I suggest you don't carry it. Or in Brooklyn. You'll make a bold statement about the most important war America faces, which is Trump's war. You're his army. This is Michael Solzhenitsyn Savage. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. such old age. Here's a story that's awesome. 105 year old Frenchman set cycling record. This is an amazing story. What what an inspirational story. San Quentin on Yveline, France. Nearly a century ago Robert Marchand was told by a coach that he should give up cycling because he would never achieve anything on a bike. On Wednesday in a skin tight yellow and violet jersey, the 105 year old Frenchman set a world record in the 105 plus age category. Could you believe this? He said, I'm now waiting for a rival. Marchand had ridden faster in the past on the boards of the Velodrome National uh, to host the elite of track cycling. But he had worn before his latest attempt at his current form was not as good. Do you know why he wasn't as good? Because his doctor said he gave up eating meat a few years ago, after 103 years. He stopped eating meat not because he thought it was bad for him, but because of the shocking images on how animals are subjected to cruel treatment. His doctor said he could have been faster, but he made a big mistake. He has stopped eating meat over the past month, rather, after being shocked by another... He ate meat for 104 years. <laughs> no, that's interesting. He ate meat for 104 years. And then he gave up meat. Okay, because of the cruel... So he dropped it because of ethical reasons. I understand that. So Marchand's physiologist said because he gave up meat, uh, he made a big mistake. He could have been faster. 105 years old, Marchand lives in a small flat in a Parisian suburb with a meager pension of $940 a month. But he keeps pedaling and stretching every day as if time had no effect on him. Uh, a university professor said he's got two essential qualities, a big heart that pumps a lot of blood, and he can reach high heartbeat values that are exceptional for his age. If he starts eating meat again and builds more muscle, he can better this mark. That is good. I just added, I'm eating a lot of meat lately, personally. That's why I'm doing better radio. Marchand is a former firefighter who was born in 1911 in the northern town of Amiens. 
lived through two world wars. He went to Venezuela, where he worked as a truck driver near the end of the 1940s, then moved to Canada, became a lumberjack, and then in the France that he moved back to in the 60s, he made a living through various jobs and couldn't practice sports. Finally, when he was 68 years old, he took up his bicycling again and began uh, to break records. He uh, is five feet tall. He weighs only 115 pounds. He rode from Bordeaux to Paris and Paris to Roubaix several times. He cycled to Moscow from Paris in 1992. And he set the record for someone over the age of 100 riding 62 miles. Can you believe? That's a great story. According to the physiologist, the secret behind Marchand's longevity relates to his healthy lifestyle. Eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, or he eats meat, no smoking, the occasional glass of wine, and exercising on a daily basis. He, could, he never pushed his limits. This is intriguing to me because I've told you a thousand times about that. He never pushed his limits. He goes to bed at 9 p.m. and wakes up at 6 a.m. There's no other secret. To stay fit, Marshawn rides every day on his home trainer and puts himself through outdoor training sessions on the road when the weather is good enough. One needs to keep his muscles working, said Marshawn, the faithful reader of communist newspaper La Humanité. So you see, communism is good for you, I guess. It's very good to be a commie out there if the state gives you 900 euros a month and you ride your bicycle. Just stay out of, I don't care if you're a communist, just stay out of my life. Read, read your commie magazines, I don't care. Watch MSNBC. Just stay out of my life. He reads a lot to keep his mind alert. He does not watch TV apart from the Tour de France stages. 105 years old. Now, there's one thing I want to talk about for a minute. He never pushed his limits. i, I got to mention this for, for a reason. For years I've told you my, my analysis of health and longevity, and believe me, I'm too young to tell you that I know much about it. If I were over 80, I could start lecturing you on health, but I'm not. I would say 80 is the cutoff point where anyone could give you health advice. Before then, it's, it doesn't mean anything. But in my case, because my poor father died at 57, and my grandfather died at 49, and in old country, my great-grandfather died at 49, all of heart disease, I thought I was doomed to an early death. I really did. So I went into the health fields very early on. I was always searching for the... Uh, the secret, the secret to longevity, the secret to heart health. I didn't know why they were dying so young. I still don't know that I know for sure. I have some inklings. However, in my many years of struggling with health concepts and studying alternative medicine, and trust me, I've done a lot of it, homeopathy, herbal medicine, certainly nutrition. My doctorate is a first class degree from the University of California. And I used to write books in the subject. So I was always immersed in this field. One thing I came to early on, by the way, my voice is a little weak right now. It's, it's gotten weaker today from a little screaming event that occurred. And so you hear that in my voice right now. Just uh, trust me, it'll be back tomorrow. I'll, I'll eat some honey, talking about longevity and health. Uh, one thing I understood was is you never push your body beyond a certain point. Never. Never, never, never. And I see people running to exhaustion and gagging. They're going to die of a heart attack and they're going to die young. I always watch the Asian practitioners of Tai Chi in the parks of San Francisco and other places, and I notice something about Asian concepts of health, and it's mainly about movement and things like that, right? Remember I told you that many times? They never push themselves. <laughs> you see the men running like that? They're going to get a blowout. The tire's going to go. Massive blowout. So be very careful pushing yourself on those exercise machines or pushing yourself till you sweat, you're gonna die. You're gonna blow an artery, you're gonna blow it, you're gonna blow an artery and die. It's that simple. Forget the whole concept of pushing yourself beyond your limits. That's an idiotic concept that was developed in America by muscle bound morons who were on steroids in gymnasiums to make you look like like a freak show. Take it easy. Don't push yourself over those limits. Don't Okay, let me put it to you another way. If I were writing a story about a man who keeps fit and he's 80 or 90 years old, I would say he goes in the ocean and swims every day, and he swims out into the ocean until he feels warm, and then he turns around and comes back. Period. End of story. He doesn't swim until he's gagging, and he's going to suck water in and die. So that's another. And one other thing on the health thing, I don't know how I got into it, because the guy's 105, I'm encouraged, and he eats meat until only a month ago. That's great, because I, I've started eating a lot of meat lately. I am eating a lot more meat lately. I, mean, I had so much energy yesterday. Remember I cooked during the show? 
I told you during the break I went and cooked the one pound of uh, organic meat, uh, farm-raised meat, whatever it was. And I didn't eat the whole pound. I ate about a quarter, half a pound of it. I had more energy than I've had in, in months from the meat. I know it. It just affected my brain. I'm, I'm salivating right now because I haven't, I haven't eaten. There's another story I've got to tell you about health because we're on the track right now. When I was 30 years old, I was a runner. I was an avid runner. I was very slender. I weighed about 135 pounds. I was in great shape, theoretically in great shape. Do you know that I wrote articles for Runner's Magazine? Raise your hand if you knew that. People don't know that. So I've been in the health field for a while. So I wrote for Runner's Mag at the time. I was very interested in running and things like that. Well, I was a runner, as I said, and I used to run up in the back of a valley. I used to run up a waterfall, not in the water, but on the side of it. I was like a, a zealot. I was like a, a Spartan trainer. And I uh, lived in California, Northern California, and I would go to the back of a valley. I'd run into the back of the valley, then run up the side of a waterfall, and then run down. And as I say, I had very low cholesterol. I, I, I weighed very, you know, great shape. Skinny as a rail, wiry as you can imagine. Well, one day I ran up, I think my, oh God, my kid was young going into school. I ran up that waterfall, and I heard an inner voice scream at me, stop, 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 stop. It was so loud, it scared me to death. I never ran again for the rest of my life.